Hey there, I'm just going to turn up the uh, heat on my boiling water here. I've got like a tablespoon of rock salt, chuck that in. Whee, it's ready to go. Now this is um, uh, number five uh, spaghetti from Barilla. Uh, it's really, for me, the ideal um, pasta to use. Uh, you could try some other fresh things, different brands, but really is like a, for a mass production uh, Spaghetti, that's my favourite. Number five, it says nine minutes to cook on the packet, but I would do seven because we're going to do a little bit of extra cooking with the sauce. We've got to um, get this guanciale, which is cut really fine. Guanciale is the um, uh, cured pig cheek. It's not smoked like bacon, so it's a bit more kind of silky in its, um, its flavour, not as dark and earthy. Uh, and you can see how much fat there actually is on this. Um, what we're going to do is render a lot of that fat off. When that's finished cooking from the pan, we'll put it aside on some paper towel and let it dry out uh, so it can become all crispy and we'll sprinkle that over the top later. Also, the cracked pepper, you can use a mill if you want to, but I think you get some quite inconsistent grounds from most mills. Uh, whereas if you use a mortar and pestle, you get this really nice control over how fine it is. And you also open up a bit more of the uh, aromatics from it as well. I've got, and this is, Mind you, for two people, two adults, I've got 250 grams or half a pack of that, a packet of that Barilla. There's two egg yolks and one whole egg. And we're gonna be careful when we're making the sauce not to scramble it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it chilled in some ceramic cups. We're gonna be using some of this pasta water when the pasta's like halfway through its cook process, say three to four minutes. We're gonna extract some of that water that'll have some starch from there. That's gonna help sauce up a bit better but we're going to use a cold cup so we can bring the temperature of that um, liquid down, mix it with the egg so it doesn't scramble or curdle the egg before then we put it in with the sauce. And this is kind of just gradually bringing that egg into the hot environment without it going into curdling or scrambling. And we've also got some Pecorino cheese. This is a Riccio brand. It's made from ewe's milk, not cow's milk, and it's got a lot creamier texture to it, which is going to help create more of a sort of a smoother sauce out of the whole thing. And really, that's all you have for a traditional carbonara, is your guanciale, your pasta, your egg, your pecorino, and some cracked pepper. I've got 50 grams of Pecorino here as well. I'll be saving maybe 10 grams of it just as like a finish as well on top. But it's generally for the sauce um, and I'll put the uh, uh, cracked pepper on at the end as well. So what I'll do is I'll put this pasta in and I've got a seven minute timer. So we'll just uh, make sure that goes around. You don't need to put oil in your pasta water if ever you still think that's something people do. I'm sure nonas will thumb their noses at you if you do it. And I'd spend a good minute just working this pasta around just to make sure you don't have anything sticking. Okay, we're going to get this guanciale in in a moment. And we don't want much heat because it does become quite acrid um, if it gets uh, smoky. And you're going to be surprised how much fat is going to come off this and how much how little flesh is actually left um, when it's dried off. I'll just get a strainer. I'll get a sieve for later on. Now what we're doing with a carbonara, a traditional carbonara, is trying to create an emulsion in the sauce. Now oil and water don't typically combine together, and we are going to be using some oil content from the uh, guanciale fat, and even the um, cheese has a fair amount of fat in it as well. We're going to be combining it with some of the pasta water. And those two things won't generally blend very well together. So you need an emulsifier, which is an agent that's going to help um, homogenize and make the sauce even. And that's where starches, uh, proteins, egg comes in. Egg also has some fat content in it, particularly the yolk. And that's why it's predominantly yolk in here as well. You can see how, um, how rich 
that all is. And I've given this a really good whisk so there's no kind of gluggy bits in there. It's all almost like water in terms of how smooth it's been blended up. Okay, so I reckon we're ready to get this guanciale in. And what we're going to want to do is work this around the surface of the pan so it's all getting some contact. And you can start see how it's starting to get translucent here as well. It's all clearing up. That's good. We know with the the um, rendering process is uh, underway. And you'll see I've got a very, very low heat here. It's on a big burner, but on the smallest. And I'll give that another stir. You can see how fine I've actually sliced this meat here. If you've got a shaver, or you can get someone at a deli to do it, some delis refuse to shave it. Some, no mind. The finer you can get it, the quicker that fat's going to render off the meat. And you can start to see some of the fat pulling down here. We're going to be using about half of that for for the sauce. We don't want too much fat, or it's just going to be a little bit too, you know, a bit too cloying. And uh, and particularly with this pecorino cheese, it's already got a cloying texture to it as well. Once the egg's part of the emulsion, it's all going to be a very mouthfeel-based sauce, and it will resemble cream in some respects, which is why. Particularly in Australia, you see a lot of carbonaras that do have cream. And you can start to see a little bit of kind of orangeness in, in, the, in the fat. So, uh, sorry, in the meat here and the fat. Some more salmon, salmon coloured actually. And you also see how there's a bit of fat bubbling here as well so we are trying to kind of shallow fry that get some oil up into all the pieces there and continue to reduce it now we're at the two minute stage with the pasta well i should say two minutes left that's uh, already five minutes cooking time and we're not far off having to uh, strain this off Just going to push this heat up a little bit more just so we can speed up this process but we're going to be careful not to let it get acrid this is a delicate piece of cured meat and we want to, we want to be careful with it oh we can see a lot more fat coming off here now And it's almost kind of, it's almost a deep fry in some respects as well. Okay. Yeah, it's getting a bit too hot. I can see how much smoke's coming off and that's an indication of how accurate it might end up being if we're not careful. Now I can already see, we've got a piece here for example, and it's floppy, all right? It's actually very meaty and less fat. Oh. Um, and this is what we want, this sort of colour. But we've got to be careful not to overdo it. So I think we're fine here. We really want to get as much fat off the meat as possible because this is going to have to uh, cool down and crisp up on this paper towel. All right, now we've got way too much fat here. So I'm going to strain some of that off.
And there's our seven minutes for the pasta. Give this a little bit of a clean. And we want to keep this pan off the heat. It's really important to get off the heat. The less heat that we have on there at the moment, the less likely this is going to scramble. So I strained off all the kind of um, grainy bits of this fat and I've got more of the pure fat. It's about half of it. <coughs> we can see there. It's a much cleaner fat in there. I'm going to take a whole cup of this water. I'm going to use that in a moment. In the meantime, I'll just strain this off. Let it sit there. And that will actually keep cooking like that as well. Uh, it will start to stick after a minute, so we're going to begin to this rather quick. So we're going to get this cheese in, most of it. A little bit for garnish. We've got the spatula. I'm just going to work it in. And you can kind of see how it's starting to melt here. All right, it's getting a little bit stretchy. Now you can add the peppercorn at this stage, but I think it's going to be a little bit easier to emulsify the sauce. I'm going to bring it back to this heat for just a moment once I've had a quick um, blend of some of this pasta water. I only want to put a dash in. Um, we're going to rely on the coolness of these cups to help cool it, cool it down without scrambling. But just like a couple of tablespoons in there, just a little bit and stir it very quickly. And you can start to see already that there's no scrambling. All right, I can feel the cup. still feels like less cooler than room temperature, so I can put a little bit more in. And this is just going to help acclimatise the, the egg to this cheesy fat. So that's cool there. I put a bit of water in there, and you can see there's no way that this is blending at the moment. It's fat and water and cheese, and it's not really getting together, all right? But now, I'm going to bring this liquid in. Start blending it up with the cheese. Still looks quite a mess, all right? Cheese isn't really mixing with anything. We've just got this residual heat and it's slowly bringing the egg up. I'm going to put it on this low heat again. Just get it to start cooking up a little bit. So we're pretty much around about the 10 minute mark uh, of since we started cooking the pasta. Seven minutes uh, of boiling time. And we're about two minutes or so into the pasta. And then what we're going to do, it looks really wet, but it doesn't matter because this pasta, we're going to work the pasta into the sauce. Now you can start to turn up the heat a little bit if you want to, but you've got to be really in control. And what we're doing, we're actually, we need to flip this pasta to work and stretch all the surface starch off it into the sauce. And as you can see, there's almost no sauce there now. So we've got room to put a little bit more, a little bit more liquid as well. It'll take more, you'll be surprised. There's another two tablespoons. That's loosened up a bit now. But that starch, we keep working that on the pan and just folding it over and over, and it will absorb more of that liquid and it will resemble cream. So there we go, you can start to see it's looking much more creamy. We could even put another or one tablespoon in there. And I'm still on this very low heat too. And you can hear how the slap of the pasta on the creamy egg. All right, I reckon we're okay to uh, put half of this pe uh, pepper in there. And 
heat off. So I think we're around about the 11 minute mark here. I wouldn't be surprised. And there's two large serves. What you'll find with this um, uh, guanciale now is it's gone crispy. And that texture it was so nice on top of the creamy al dente pasta. All right. I'm pretty happy with this. Pick it up, give it a twist. Another one over here. You can see how creamy that sauce looks now. All right, so you can put a bit of it on there. Rest of it on here. Share the sauce. Okay, a little bit more pecorino for everyone. Bit more of this cracked pepper on top. And then the guanciale. Just sit it on top like that. Traditional Italian carbonara.